Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins from Big Mountain Studio, and today I'm going to teach you about the user interaction enabled property of the UI view. And I'm going to show you a little bit about this property and how to use it. And we'll also cover things such as user events and what the event queue is and how that relates to the user interaction enabled property. In the Apple documentation, it describes a user interaction enabled property as a Boolean value that determines whether user events are ignored and removed from the event queue. Okay, so there's a couple of things in there that you might not be familiar with, so I'm just going to go over them real quick. So user events are anything that includes touches, gestures, such as tapping or sliding on the screen of the device. It could also include scrolling, touching buttons, touching the keyboard, and things that happen on the device itself, such as when the accelerometer is being used on the device. Now there's another word that that's used there too. It says a Boolean value that determines whether user events, such as touches, gestures, scrolling, are ignored and removed from the event queue. I'm going to show you what the event queue is so you can have a better understanding of what's happening. Now in order to understand what the event queue is, I prepared some slides so you can better get an idea of uh, what's happening on a device. Your application mainly consists of three parts. You have your UI application, which is your app delegate. And if you look in your project, the app delegate represents your UI application. UI application is basically things that handle events on an application level, like when the application starts, when the application shuts down, things like that. And your UI application has a UI window. And the UI window is basically anything that's graphically shown on your device. You know, you're used to having like views in a storyboard, um, a view controllers rather, that, that show scenes on your storyboard. Well, that whole view controller is actually surrounded by a UI window. And then, of course, you have your different views. And here is kind of like an example. You have four different views. And right now, the purple view is the one that's being shown in the UI window. Uh, here, I have an example of an application that's running on a device. It could be an iPhone or iPad. And it just says, hello, world. Welcome to my app. And then there's another view with some text in it that says, New to my app, follow the tutorial. And you can click the continue button to go on to the tutorial, or you can click skip to go on to the application. Now when the user clicks on the continue button, that tap is a user event that happens on the device. And what happens is the device sends that tap to the UI application, and the UI application receives information that the screen was touched. So it puts that touch into the event queue now there's an event queue because multiple things can happen at the same time. The user can be moving his phone and so it's triggering the accelerometer events. Or the user can be sliding or using two fingers to do something. So all of these events are sent from the device to the UI application and they enter the queue. And the UI application will take the first event, you know, in order, and then send it to the UI window. And it's up to the UI window to figure out what exactly was touched. And the way it goes about that is it kind of narrows down from the root level view, which in this case is A, and it says, did the touch happen within A? Yes, it did. Okay, so now that it knows it happens inside of the root view, it has to find out where exactly in the root view it happened. So it'll check B and C, because those things are the next ones that are on the same level. Did it happen in B? Yes, it did. Okay, so it's gonna sit, skip C, and then in that blue, UI view, it's going to check all the subviews within B and find which one, which item was clicked. So it will finally find that D was clicked. And then once it finds out, you know, D was clicked, then it checks to see if that button can handle that touch event. And in this case, it probably can, you know, developer probably coded something for the continue button. And so it handles that user event. And what Apple calls it the responder, the button becomes the responder. So you notice the UI application has that event queue. Well, this is where the property user interaction enabled comes into play. If the user interaction enabled on that continue button was false, that touch event would have never even entered the event queue. And if it's true, which it is by default, UI buttons are true by default, it'll enter the event queue and then it'll pass that touch event onto the UI window and the UI window will find out which button was pressed or not which button, but which control was, was pressed or which one can respond to that touch event. 
Okay, now that you have some kind of familiarization with user interaction enabled and how it prevents touches from being sent from the device to your application, the UI application, let's do some examples here. Now a real simple example is you have a button and if we just put this right here and we want to do something with this button so you know if it's clicked or not clicked. So let's write some code for it. I'm just going to add an action outlet and we'll say we'll just say button click. And for the button, let's change this to UI button so I don't have to cast it myself. And then we'll just say sender, which is a type of UI button. And the sender is basically the the object that you just click. It passes itself into the the click event here, into the action outlet. So I'm just going to say, uh, uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's just set title, and we'll just say um, clicked. That way we'll know that it's clicked. And this will just be for the normal state. Okay. And then if we run that, it should just perform normally. You click it and the text should change. Okay, so I click on the button and it does change. It just doesn't fit with inside, <laughs> inside of it. Okay, good, but that proves that it is working. So now what I'm going to do is if we change that to uh, right here, change the interaction property, use interaction enabled. If I disable that, and then let's run it now. If I click it, nothing happens. Now notice I what I did was I unchecked the user interaction enabled. So now when I click on that, my touch event on the device for the button isn't even being sent to the event queue. So it's not even going to register. And what I did is also kind of would be considered a bad practice because button still looks like it's enabled. It has that blue color and it looks like a valid button, but nothing is happening. So in this case, if you want to disable your button, I wouldn't recommend unchecking user interaction enabled or in code, this property is called is user interaction enabled. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that use uh, setting that to true or false for the button. Instead, what I would do is set the enabled property to true or false then that way it grades the text. Okay, now there's something else I want to show you too. Let's let's have that, let's enable that again. And let's put a UI view on here. All right, now you know if the UI view is covering the button, you won't be able to click it. It won't receive the events. And if we change the alpha, there we go and run it, the button never receives the event. And then you might, and then, but if you change the alpha all the way to zero and run the property, what do you think will happen? Will I be able to click that button? Yes, I can click it. That's interesting. So uh, the point I wanted to make here is if you have a UI view on top of a button with the alpha set to zero, it's like the UI view isn't even there and you can click through it and the button will receive the touch event. But I also wanna show you something else. If you set this UI view to user interaction enabled equals false, now what do you think will happen? That's right, you can still click on the button. Because as long as the alpha is set to zero, you can still click through things. So user interaction enabled doesn't matter on objects that you can't see. Okay, so we're going to get rid of that UI view. Now there's one last thing I want to show you, and this is pretty interesting. I'm on, right now I have the view selected, the main view that the button is in. And we know the button you can click on right now. User interaction enabled is true. Now. On the view, by default, UI views 
uh, have user interaction enabled equals true. So if I turn that off, what do you think will happen with the button? Will I be able to click it or not? Let's see. No, I can't. And this is something developers start to find out kind of the hard way, unfortunately. <laughs> what happens is, and this might seem kind of weird, but when you have a UI view and you uncheck user interaction enabled, it will actually disable everything inside of it, all of its subviews. All of its all the subviews in that view now cannot be interacted with, including buttons. Even if the button is, you know, as you can see here, it's set to user interaction enabled. So you still can't click the button. So that's another thing to keep in mind. You might be able to use that to your advantage. If you want to disable everything real quick, just go to the root view and turn off user interaction enabled equals false. And everything will now not respond to clicking. And this is kind of like what happens too. This is just another kind of an inside tip. When you have animation that, that occurs, usually the animations do the same thing. It'll disable everything, so you can't interact with any of the objects while they're animating. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have for user interaction enabled. I hope this helped you out. And basically, just to recap what we've learned, we've learned that the user interaction enabled determines if your device will be sending touch events to your UI application or not. If user interaction enabled equals false, your UI application will not be receiving events from the device. And you also learned about what user events are. There are anything that the user can do to interact with the phone or any events that the phone causes itself, such as using the accelerometer. So you also learned what user events are, and those are just like touches, gestures, you know, like tapping or sliding, scrolling, touching buttons, using the keyboard, and things on the device itself, like the accelerometer, the camera, recording, the microphone, those are all user events. And you also learned about the event queue. And the event queue, again, is something that exists on your application that receives all kinds of information from the device, including touches or what's happening on the device, and sends it to your application and puts it in a queue or a list. And then it sends those user events to your UI window and the UI window finds uh, what's being interacted with, what buttons are being touched or slid in, or what scroll view is being scrolled, things like that. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you.